Hello Gecko fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko. My wife has a strange word, it's crack -a -lackin. I think it means to get going, to get off your butt and get something done and get it done in a short period of time. So we're not going to dilly-dally, is that a word? We're not going to dilly-dally and we're going to get crack -a with a beautiful, beautiful animal, Periodora stumphi, one of my favorites and we're going to get into it right now. I've told the story before, but I'm going to tell it again. When I started doing videos a few years ago, you couldn't find any good information on some of the rarer geckos in the hobby. I would go to YouTube, I would see a video for about 10 to 20 seconds, maybe even a half a minute, and it's all about the animal feeding. No information on their care, no information about their breeding, none of that whatsoever. So that's my job with Supreme Gecko Channel is to hopefully educate everybody on some of these rarer geckos. And we're, today we're going to take a look at one of the rarer geckos, Periodora stumphi. So let's take a look at their enclosure and I'll talk about this rare gecko. So today we have a special treat in that we're going to get into Periodora stumphi, one of my favorite geckos. And make sure you watch till the end of this video. I haven't mentioned this that much this year, but we're doing a huge giveaway at the end of the year, and I'm going to tell you how you can enter into this giveaway. So watch to the end. Periodora stumphi is one of my favorite geckos of all time. Why? Because it's small, it's easy to keep, it's just a beautiful animal, and well, let's get into the video and I'll tell you. First, let's take a quick trip through the whole Periodora genus. There's 22 different species. You see some of them a lot, you see some of them very, very rarely. The most common that everybody sees is Periodora picta, the common Madagascar ground gecko, oscillated gecko. It goes by about a hundred different common names, but I like to call it Periodora picta. And while not as common as Periodora picta in the hobby, we still find in the hobby some other Periodora, such as Bastardi, Vazimba, Ibidiensis, Oviceps, Androiensis, and certainly Stumphi. A couple of the more uncommon Periodora in the hobby are Lohatsera and Gracilis, both beautiful, beautiful animals. And the really, really rare one, Periodora Masovi, one of my absolute favorite geckos, but you just don't see them in the hobby and they are very, very difficult. All the other Periodoras just don't make it in the hobby at all, but we are very fortunate to see these others that I just listed. These Periodora range from size from about an inch and a half to two inches for the Periodora andoriensis and up to six inches for those Masovi and Gracilis. So are Periodora nocturnal or diurnal? Take a look at those eyes. Do you want to guess what they are? Nocturnal being a nighttime gecko and diurnal being a daytime gecko. Those eyes point to me that they're absolutely nocturnal. Big eyes so that they can see at night. Here's another question for you. Are Periodora terrestrial or arboreal? Terrestrial being down on the ground, arboreal meaning they like to climb. Well, this is kind of a trick question because they're semi-arboreal. They like to stay down on the ground, especially some of the smaller species like Androiensis and Vizimba, but they also like to climb, especially for the Pict Periodora picta and especially the Periodora misovi. They like to hang up on branches and capture their prey from jumping down from the branches downward. These guys are bug eaters. They love crickets, they love dubia, they love silkworms, and absolutely they love mealworms. That's the whole genus. Absolutely make sure that you're dusting with some kind of a calcium and multivitamin. And finally for this Periodora genus, they all come from Madagascar. They're all endemic to Madagascar, meaning that that's the country that they come from. They're not found anywhere else. Now, some of these animals are on CITES, meaning that they're either endangered or they're at least limited to the amount of animals that can come out of this country, exported out of Madagascar 
into other countries, meaning we need to do our job in breeding these animals in captivity and being able to distribute those animals to other hobbyists. So let's talk about Periodora stumphi specifically. It's a small gecko. It's only about three inches long, three and a half to four maybe. You can keep them in a small enclosure. I've held them in a five gallon enclosure for a very, very, very short time while I've set up their main enclosure. But you can go with a 12 by 12 by 18 enclosure as long as you have tons and tons of hides and climbing area, cork bark specifically. You can go with a 10 gallon. It's a great size enclosure. Being that it's 16 inches by eight inches surface area, that's a great enclosure for these animals. I keep mine in a 15 gallon enclosure to give them just a little bit more room because I have anywhere from uh, one male to three or four females at a time in that enclosure. For a substrate, you should go with about an inch and a half to two inches of substrate. What I do is I mix dirt with a Zilla jungle mix. It's just a perfect combination. Add a little bit of sand and it really holds in the moisture and it allows those Periodora stumphi an area to dig in. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. For decorations, you can go with all kinds of different things from plastic plants to live plants to branches to overturned flower pots to coconut shells, half coconut shells to uh, cork bark to branches all kinds of different decorations. They love to climb, they love to get up on top of things and look around. Just a very interesting gecko and they love lots of decoration. Here's a really, really important piece of information for these animals. They love a higher humidity. The whole enclosure doesn't have to be humid, but they do come from a tropical area in Madagascar, so they do like a humid area. So what I do is I put down an overturned cork bark with a rounded uh, concave look to it and I put sphagnum moss underneath. I use a half uh, coconut shell and I put sphagnum moss under there somewhere to allow a moist area so that that holds in the humidity. And for our isopad fans, moist area means take a drink. Let's talk about temperatures. They love temperatures in about the mid 70s or so, but you really, really have to give them a warm spot of about 90 to 94 for about 20 to 30% of their enclosure. You can do that with either a heat mat underneath or an incandescent light on top, something to provide that 90 to 94 temperature range. And for lighting, I use fluorescent bulbs. UVB isn't required, but it's certainly beneficial to these animals. Now, like a lot of other reptiles, two males just will not tolerate each other. So I keep my animals in either a male and a female combination or male and two or three females. It just does better in a colony that size. And again, we're feeding all kinds of varieties of different live foods to these animals from crickets to silkworms to small dubias to mealworms. We feed a lot, a lot of mealworms to these animals. So now you're asking, how do I breed Periodora stumphi? Well, it's super, super easy, but you have to start it out with at least a male and one female. How do you tell a male? Well, a male will have the bulge at the, the beginning of their tail. A female will be bigger than the male and it will look heavier than the male. Now here's a warning for you. Periodora stumphi will breed earlier than a year. So what I do is once I breed these animals and I raise the babies, I start separating them out at about two months of age so that the females don't breed too early. So they have a chance to grow up and develop some weight and they're ready for breeding at about a year or so. That's when we introduce our uh, animals. Periodora stumphi will breed during the warmer times of the year, usually from the spring all the way to the fall. So keep those females pumped up with food. Absolutely make sure that you're dusting with the calcium and the multivitamin and you'll have happy Periodora stumphi. Periodora females will lay their eggs in the substrate. And I found those eggs sometimes on the dry side and sometimes on the moist area. And then it's just a matter of digging through the substrate with your fingers, sifting through and finding those eggs gently, pulling them out and setting them aside for incubation. To incubate the eggs, I simply put them in a bottle cap with some dry material, put them on top of the dry material, then put that bottle cap 
in some kind of other container, either a deli cup or some other larger container, and fill that other container with a moist substrate, like a vermiculite or like a perlite. Keep that substrate moist and the bottle cap substrate dry, and that allows the eggs to absorb the humidity without actually being wet. We incubate at temperatures between 80 and 84 degrees. After about two months, those Periodora stumpfi babies will hatch out and they are a sight to see. Just amazing, amazing colors, especially on their tail. Look at the striping of a baby Periodora stumpfi. It's just amazing, at least I think so. Raising Periodora stumpfi babies is fairly simple. There's two key components. Keep them in something that's a moist substrate, that has a moist substrate, like a Zilla Jungle Mix. Don't keep that substrate completely moist, but give them a moist side and a dry side. Give them a small food dish and a small water dish. For food, we give them a lot, a lot of mealworms. We throw in fruit flies occasionally and baby silkworms, and they just eat all the time. For the first month, month and a half or so, they do tend to be very, very slow growers. So absolutely be patient with these animals. We try to feed every single day so that we can get those baby Periodora stumpfi up to a manageable size as quick as possible. So again, this is an amazing gecko. One of my personal favorites, not just from the colors on the babies, which are just amazing, but also the ease of care, the ease of feeding, the unusual behavior that these uh, animals have. It's just a, been a pleasure working with Periodora stumpfi. So you've been patiently waiting for more information on the giveaway, and that's coming right now. There's actually going to be two giveaways. The first is called the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas, and that's going to be on our website, and I'll have more information on that in upcoming videos. The second giveaway is more YouTube-based, and it's based off of the comments that you leave on all of my videos this year. Both giveaways are going to give away huge, huge gifts. The 12 Supreme Days of Christmas, the last year that we did it, we gave over $1,250 worth of gifts away. Last year, we gave away over $300 of gifts on the YouTube giveaway at the end of the year. And I plan on that being much, much bigger this year. So how do you enter? Leave a comment below on this video, certainly. Any comment will do. I'm counting all of the comments for our participation gift at the end of the year. So leave a comment on this video. Leave a comment on any video that you see from the Supreme Gecko channel for the whole year, and you'll be entered multiple times. Leave as many comments as you want on any of our videos, and you'll be entered into the giveaway multiple times. It's going to be exciting. I can tell you that. It really will be. So thank you very much for watching this. I hope I've convinced you to at least consider keeping Periodora stumpfi sometime in the future. They're a great animal. I love keeping them. I know that you will as well. If you haven't already, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that notification all. And thank you again for watching this video.